Welcome to my first podcast. This is Brian from BZD Films. Today we're going to be talking about how to export video and audio from Final Cut Pro to go into Pro Tools. Uh, the first thing, once your timeline is completely edited, you want to duplicate that, rename that something like Audio Sync. Now this is going to be the timeline that we're going to use. So I just want to make sure that there's no funny characters. I'll get rid of that slash, turn it into a dash. Now we need to go into the settings make sure these are set up properly, specifically the timeline options. Make sure drop frame is not selected. We want to make sure the time is accurately counted. We want to change minutes to 59 and seconds to 58. Now we double click on that, make sure that we're editing this timeline and not the other timeline. We don't want to edit the one that we just used. Now we go in here and we select everything either from the edit menu, select all or Apple A. We want to make sure that the very first frame lines up at 1 hour 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. We go back to the beginning. We're going to get a mat. We want a solid color mat. Let's change this and make it completely white. So you go to controls when you double click. Make it white. Go back to video and we push over to the right on the keyboard for one frame. We push O to set that as the out point. Now we're going to drag it over there. We're going to write that in to wherever our cursor was. We've got two of them there. Let's delete it. We just need one frame of white. It's very important that we only have one frame of white. Now what we need is a two pop for the audio. This is what will allow us to sync up the video and the audio together later on. We need bars and tones. Let's select our proper bars and tone. In this case, we just need NTSC. We really just want the tone. So again, I'm just selecting one frame using in and out points. And what I'm doing here is I'm setting it up so that only the audio will go down below. So when I click the overwrite, it only writes the audio and not those bars. We only want the audio. This is important because this is how we're going to sync everything up later on, having that one frame of white along with that one frame of reference tone. Now over here, I'm changing on the timeline to be exactly two seconds after the last frame of action. So again, I'm writing just one frame of reference tone. I'm going to copy and paste that one frame of white. Now I'm going to zoom way in so that I can just make sure that everything is exactly two seconds off. I'm holding down shift and going over to the right on the keyboard two times. As you can see, it wasn't exactly right. This is very important that it is exactly right. Exactly two seconds after the last frame, we want one frame of white with one frame of reference tone. So now I've zoomed all the way back out. I'm going to export the video I'm going to export QuickTime Movie. I really only want the video. And I want to make sure it's not self-contained because we're just going to use this very briefly. So I've set it for video only. And I'm going to save. This won't take very long to export. And once we have it exported, we go on over to the Finder. We find it. We put it back into Final Cut. Make sure we click Anamorphic. This happens to be Anamorphic Footage. Now we're going to overwrite everything on our timeline. Let's double check to make sure that it does line up. We have that one frame of white lining up with the audio. Now hopefully you're beginning to see why this one frame of white is so important later on when we want to marry the video to the audio tracks. So it all seems pretty good. Now one last measure that we put in to double check is the time code generator. So click on that one video file. This is also the reason we want just one track of video. We go to video filters, we select video, and we want the time code generator. You can see it starts at two seconds. My cursor right now is lined up at 1000000. So we need to go into the settings there. So I've double clicked, gone into the filters, and now I need to set this up. So I set that up. Make sure it lines up as you can see right here. Now let's go into the center, make sure that, just double check. So I'm going to look again at the time code generator and match that up 
with the time code. Uh, it's not right because I forgot to set it for non-drop frame. So when we do this, you can see it sort of changes things. I have to go back, readjust, but it's very important that these things line up and that's why it's always good to double check. So here we go, I have it lined back up so that these two things match the two time codes. I'm going to put it in the center and yes, they do indeed match. So that means we're good. We're just about done. Let's not forget to save and let's export to OMF. And this is how we're going to take our audio over to Pro Tools or when you give it to the mixing house, OMF is the best way. We want three second handles. And let's put this into an audio folder. I'm going to make a new folder and call this um, something like uh, post output and then we'll push save. Now what you can see here it's exporting all of the tracks separately. So now that we're done with that uh, let's export the video that now has the time code generator into this same folder. We want just the video. This time we want it, it's very important that the video is self-contained because this is what all they're going to get is these two files, the OMF and the .mov. After that, we're done. Thanks again for joining me on my first podcast. Again, this is Brian at BZD Films. Join us on our website and feel free to send requests.